Happy Wednesday, everyone. Happy Wednesday, happy Wednesday, happy Wednesday. It's your girl, Angel Monique, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I have a guest on here, a special guest. His name is Montoya. He's going to be joining us. Hello, everyone tuning in. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Um, I hope you guys are having an amazing Wednesday. Of course, you guys know that I do my mental... I'm sorry, not my mental... My lives on Tuesdays. But for the past two weeks, I've been having to do it on Wednesday. Because I just finished wrapping up a film, which I'm going to be excited to tell you about shortly. Um, so y'all stay tuned for that, but I have a special guest who will we'll be joining us. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Queen? I'm good. How are you? Doing great. Good. Nice to see you on here. Oh, yes. I know. No doubt. Definitely good to see you. <laughs> um, how how you feeling today? Again, I'm feeling excellent. Um, just I'm just it's a, my second broadcast today, so glad to be getting the word out about the Mental Dialogue Community Club. So appreciate you. Yeah, yeah. You had a, a another um, meeting or view today? Well, it was yeah, it wasn't necessarily directly related to this, but it was just uh, you know I'm always trying to connect people in the community, and so it was just I did a dialogue about um, insurance and how we, it can assist our communities. I'm, I'm all about you know about all about our community, if that makes sense. Okay, yeah, for sure. Well, let's just jump right in. Why don't you go ahead and start off with your name and just tell the people who you are. First of all, before you do that, thank you so much for accepting the request to join my live and allow me to introduce you to my audience and let everybody, everyone know how dope you are and who you are, okay? All right, sounds good. No, absolutely. Appreciate you. Again, my name's um, Montoya Smith, a.k.a. Black Socrates. I am the founder and curator of the Mental Dialogue Community Club. Uh, but ultimately, our goal is to create a nation, a virtual uh, nationwide neighborhood where African Americans trade ideas, goods, services, and the way we do that um, is via podcast, via social media, and before COVID, we would have live events as well. Uh, but at the end of the day, I just ultimately consider myself a connector and serve as an intermediary to help people get what they need based on, you know, what they need, wherever they at. Um, and our, our motto is all I ask is that you think. And the concept is raising awareness um, to reignite um, the commitment to excellence in the black country. So that's pretty much everything in a nutshell. OK. OK. And so what, what made you want to come up with this idea? What made you want to get into doing that? Specifically. Yeah, well, yeah, I know. It's, it, it was, I, I'm a, I'm a, I consider myself a writer. Um, I will be coming out with my, my book, my first book this year. I'm working woo, woo, diligently on it. Um, you know, but writers write. So I've been writing for years, you know, even whether I was going to come out with something. And anyway, um, in 2008, I ended up writing this piece. You know, just something I would randomly write. And I wrote this piece, and I was in the piece, I was exploring why do African immigrants specifically, you know, a lot of immigrants, but specifically African immigrants, why they could come to the country or why did they want to come to the United States? And to a degree, they saw this as a land of opportunity or as, or as America is promoted as the land of milk and honey, if you will. Yeah. And so because they had that perspective and I had met some here in the Atlanta area, um, I'm, I'm not from here, but I, you know, lived here since 2003. And so they would have their own, you know, so a lot of them have their own business or they would congregate together and, and their perspective, I got to know some of them. And um, in writing that piece, I was like, why, in general, not all of us, but in general, why were African-Americans blocked from their view? And as I thought about it, I realized it was the psychology. So in, in all reality, I wrote that piece, not knowing that it would blossom into the mental dialogue community club, if you will. But I always tell people that that piece was the birth of the Benton Dialogue Community Club because it was shortly thereafter that I approached um, the, the owner of uh, Fatologist, um, Jay, um, Brother Jay, the owner of Fatologist. I approached him there not too soon thereafter and says, hey, man, can I just do something in the barbershop and just start discussing issues that affect our community? Mm -hmm. And so, but again, I, you know, and I called it, I, I don't know how I came up with the name Benton Dialogue at the time, but that piece birthed this community club. Wow. And, it, and you, when you say piece, it was a, like a, a script or a book? Just something I wrote in, you know, like I, I always write it. So I just write pieces. I always share with my friends. All my friends have been saying for years, you know, put, you need to put a book out or put your, I write poetry. You know, I'm just a write, you know, writers write. You can't help it, right? right. Like you, you do productions. 
I'm pretty sure there's a whole bunch of stuff you written that nobody's ever heard or seen. So I would just write. I call them commentaries now. So like when my book comes out, it's gonna be um um called Just My Three Cents, and it's just a bunch of commentaries that I've written, maybe even similar to that piece or whatever. Uh, now that I think about it, I think I probably should add that piece to this book. Uh, I haven't even thought about that part, but it's just it's usually commentaries on current events. It could be on all kind of stuff, but my goal is to try to make people think. You know, at the end of the day, quit, yeah, critical thinking is something that's lost on on the country in general. However, I think um, if you're able to critically think, you can get through anything. And so if I can raise awareness, connect people together, it, it, it somehow it ended up being a business. It was a hobby, and I turned it into a business about six or seven years ago. Wow. And I don't, you said you're not from – where are you from? I'm from South Carolina originally. South yeah, a little small town. Or like I like to tell people, I'm from, the thri I was, I'm from the thriving metropolis of Honey Pass, South Carolina, with no McDonald's. <laughs> Three stop <laughs> Three stoplights, but it's a but it's a thriving metropolis in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Come on through, then. Come on through. Okay. Oh, it ain't gonna take long. You might, might you know, you, you you might miss it. <laughs> okay, okay. And what? Who? Who inspires you, Montoya? Like, who inspires you to do this type of work? Like, I mean, just to it's first of all, it's a great that you're doing this. Like, trying to you know just first of all being in the black community and just trying to educate us and our friends. It's 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 a joy to see us do that, to try to connect, you know, us and be of some, some type of servant. So what made you want to, who inspired you to do this? No, absolutely. Um, my all time hero is uh, Malcolm X. I came across the autobiography of Malcolm X by accident my summer going into my eighth grade year of middle school. Um, I've read it three times since probably read an, a, a, over 10 plus books on Malcolm. Mm -hmm. And it was just his commitment to our people was something that I admire. And um, it, it always inspired me. I didn't know I was going to be doing this, if you will, or yeah. whatever. But I've always, in a sense, tried to stay connected and give back and things of that nature. And um, and one thing that, that that is a part of mental dialogue that comes particularly from Malcolm is uh, Malcolm, when he was in prison, he would take place in prison debates. Mm -hmm. And he'd said his secret to being, so he was very good at it. But he said his secret to being very good at it is before he would prepare a debate, he would always prepare the other side first. So he would actually make the argument <laughs> as he was preparing based on the other side and first before. And so it was almost, it gave me the idea of look at things from the other side. And so that's what we specialize with. with you know, we do, um, we do a radio show every Saturday morning, um, the events, but anytime you come to mental dialogue, we, um, we tell, I tell people we, we specialize in the art of consideration, which, right. we, um, which is considering what the other side says. You know, we're in a, again, there's no critical thinking if all we're doing is yelling beliefs at each other. So we love to do, uh, we, spe we do hard conversations on race, sex, gender, and business in the African-American community, hard conversations, the ones people are afraid to have, but we do it well because we start out with, you know, literally two rules. Yeah. Um, political correctness is outlaw. That's the number one rule. And the second one is bring your passion, but be respectful. And so if we could do that, we could dialogue about hard issues and we ask people to consider what the other side is saying or why they're saying it, not necessarily to agree, but a lot of times we won't consider that people actually have logic for even things that we think they shouldn't believe or we're already like, you know, why do they think that? And if you listen, sometimes you can learn something. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I know um, it's good that you take that approach to listen to other people's perspective instead because I know a lot of times we don't like us as just humans in general, we don't like to listen. Sometimes it's good to just listen and hear the other point, person's point of view and just see exactly where they're coming from. I think that's great because I know for myself in general, I like to try to understand people. And I feel like once you kind of understand exactly where they're coming from and where, where they've been, you can kind of assess a lot more, you know? Uh, absolutely. I, I always say, I, you know, I, I go by the name Black Socrates, so I consider myself a, a, a modern day philosopher, if you will. Yeah. And so one thing that I always say in reference to this very thing is the truth rarely lives on the edges. Mm. But if you think about most dialogues, people are coming from the extreme of that truth. The answer typically, in most cases, is always in the middle and, and not necessarily right in the middle. But even if even if what you think, you know, or, you know, maybe you have most of the facts, sometimes the piece of information that you don't know 
if you listen, is on the other side. So in that sense, you still have to meet in the middle to actually understand what the truth really is. Yeah. But because we're so stuck on the extremes or believing this is true or the, you know, either this is true or that is true, um, and the truth is usually both, a little bit of both. Yeah. Have you, are you, would you consider yourself a debater? Um, yeah, too. Yeah, I mean, most people consider me that, and I, I, I do as well. I think I'm more, I personally, and I, and people, I, I've actually been brought in to do this. I'm actually more of a moderator. That's the role I like to play more so. Um, I, you know, I enjoy a good debate, absolutely, but I prefer actually to be a moderator between two opposing sides, and, and, and that's what I love to do. And or on the show, sometimes I will um, play devil's advocate intentionally just to force the, the thought. The thinking, uh, yeah. you know what I mean, and then yeah, and then what happens is, but due to doing that, sometimes people assume that what you're even the question, people assume where you're coming from, and I have to say no, that's just the question. Right. The question, like the question, the question is typically you can't assume where I'm coming from when I'm asking the question. Just, just answer the answer the question, and, and then let's d dialogue. But a lot of people will assume what side you are on based on. A question. We do our shows in the form of a question, yeah. you know, but we use it for marketing. Um, any show that we do is in a form of a question, and usually there's two sides to that question. Hmm. What, what would you say has been your most um, challenging question or topic that you can think of? Whew, we do a lot of hard ones. Yeah, um, like give, give me at least at least two, because I know you. Cause yeah, yeah. Even the 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 name in itself like or, or the the i guess the phrase like i only ask that you think like that's right. just a right. whole thing you know what i'm saying yeah, in itself yeah in itself <laughs> no absolutely um and let me say this about the name and i'll give you a couple topics one definitely comes to mind and i'll try to think of another one but when i can say with the motto all i ask is that you think um there's a lot of um it, it's mental dialogue the community club but there's a lot in the name itself mental dialogue yes. so what we're saying is if we can improve the conversation inside your own head, yeah. you will be better. Therefore, the community will be better. Yeah. So either the, even within the name itself, we're saying a lot. And then the motto is all I ask is that you think. Because, yeah. again, you know, uh, critical thinking will help you solve a lot of problems. But to answer your question, um, last year, one of our big topics was, is toxic mas masculinity BS or not? Um, it was an amazing. Masculinity? Yeah, to is toxic masculinity BS or not? Or is it, you know, is it B? I don't want to, I don't know if I can cuss on your yeah, thing. Yeah, do, do your thing, do your thing. But I'm just saying, what's, what's how it was worded? Is toxic mas masculinity BS or not? Okay. So that was, just to get on a concept of toxic, but we were dabbing on it from both sides because people kind of have an assumption of what it is. If, if you think of, the, the, you know, hearing that term all the time, toxic mas masculinity. Yeah. So people kind of have a, a, a what it is, and they're pretty strong about it. But the dialogue we had probably will surprise people what the answer ends up coming. Now, I'm not saying that there is an answer, but I promise you that that show really surprised people based on what they thought it was by the end of the, by the end of the show versus what they thought it was by the end of the show. And, and from that dialogue, what did you learn from it? Like, what did you learn people about people's thinking of it and what it was and what they thought? Okay. It was? Yeah, I got you. And it was it really came. It was like, I guess my guest, my guest, and my audience makes the show. But the thing that I learned, that I learned myself in particular, because uh, I'm as a moderator, I'm bringing on guests and I'm learning too. So that's a great question. Um, I realized, and it, and it was just one, it was one of the guests that was kind of pointing this out, that a lot of times what we assume or say something is, a lot of times I, I like to get into stats and get into the numbers. So a lot of things that we say are not backed up. The data does not back up things that we believe. Like, like, for example, um, like, like, I'm just saying, like, for example, say men that are, say, for example, like men that rape women or whatever, yeah. right? Or whatever. So obviously that's a horrible act or whatever. But I remember the guest was on, our, the guest that was on the show was saying, like, those men are rapists. They're, they're terrible. And the entire society has a, a concept of how they see them. If, if they're, if they're accused or caught for that, they're put in jail. Yeah. And and the point that he was the point that he, I'm just using that as an example, because that's used as an example of toxic masculinity and there's you know a concept of you know rape culture and things of that nature. And so what he was saying was, you, you he said the way I carry myself, you're not gonna lump me under that umbrella because of these bad actors. Mm -hmm. And 
and and so and so what he was just saying that a lot of the terminologies can be used and they 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 paint a broad brush versus distinguishing who actually has those traits. Yeah. And without distinguishing it, now you start painting a broad br brush to apply. And he was just saying, if we're using his own, using his own, self, own self as an example, was just saying, you can't apply this broad brush to me, and why would I have to answer for bad actors over here? I'm not going to answer for bad actors. But he didn't... And, he didn't. He didn't create, yeah. he didn't do the act himself, right? Is that? Right, exactly. He's just saying that, so yeah, so when you come up with terms that now we're, he's saying having dialogues where people who would never do these things, yeah. why am I having to have a dialogue about something that I wouldn't approve of? Right. I was stamp, but I, I was stuck. Those people can't even come around me, but we're going to have a conversation about what those, as he calls them, roaches, what those roaches are doing. Okay. So, and so he's just saying sometimes, different terms to start applying and now people that would never do those things are having to answer for uh, the bad yeah. roaches, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, so that was eye opening for me just from the standpoint where, whereas I was in a sense buying into it, but then when he breaks it down and not just, he broke it down by the numbers. So I, I'm not going to try to bring those numbers back up. And it was kind of like, yeah, it makes no sense to apply something in a broad brush manner and have these long dialogues when the actual actors that are the culprits of this stuff or not in the room, and typically we we already got we already got it we already have a way that we handle these things in society. But I'm just using that as one example of what we talked about on that show. Okay. I don't know if, I'm, I don't know if that makes sense, it, but it was definitely dope in during the show. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it, do, it totally makes sense to me. I'm I'm listening and putting into it. Do you have another one you can share or? Yeah, yeah, I got. I mean, we got. I'm just trying to think. Um, let me see. Try to think of some of my top shows all time. Like one of um. One of my top shows all the time of all time is probably like in the top five is um, what can we learn from the what can African Americans learn from the Asian American community? Mm -hmm. That's one of my top five shows of all time. Uh, one of my favorite show my 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 what, the, my most important show is do black men hate their women? That's my most important Woo! show. I've ever done. That is a, that is loaded. Why? What? Okay. What made you even? Why? 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 Uh, so, um, and I, you know, I will obviously encourage people to go find the Mental Dollar podcast because all these yeah, shows were on. I'm gonna, put, I'm gonna put everything. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm just saying they're no, they're, yeah, they're, I know you will. I know you will. But I'm just saying I'm gonna encourage people to go find you know go find the podcast. Um, ultimately, that show I've been wanting to do it for years. I've, I've been doing the show for about. A little over five years down, but that show was about three years ago, I think. Okay. Um, but I still consider it the most important show we ever done. Ever done. Um, I, you know, I brought on a um, sister that was she's in psych, a psych, she was a psychologist teacher or whatever. Yeah, yeah and um, and a couple other p and other people as well. Um, but it re, um, ultimately, I wanted to explore to a degree the history of of this the, of this. This, this level of hatred that I think to a degree that some men or a lot of African-American men are not aware of mm. because I think it has a lot of historical con context. Again, we are meant to dialogue. Ultimately, what we're ultimately doing, out of everything I said, ultimately what we're doing is trying to deal with a lot of psychological trauma right. that we have really never been allowed to deal with in this, in this country. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, to a degree, I think some traumas can be passed down. If you never think about them, you never work your way out of them. Right. And so, so I think there's a historical context for, um, uh, I really think it comes more from shame, not so much that we hate our women. Right. But I think there's a historical context of shame from the day we were brought to these shores that we've never thought about, that we've never explored. And I think some of the actions that we have we need to be aware of that shame in order to to not live it out. Yeah. And I think a lot of it's being lived out because we're unaware. And let me make it very clear, in my opinion, the original shame comes from our ancestors literally being brought here and not being able to protect their women. Mm. I, I think our sisters have long forgiven us for it through our collective consciousness. I don't know that we know that. Mm. And so in our aim to be men, in a, you know, obviously in a country as, you know, that, that hasn't always recognized us as such. Yeah. And I aim to do so. Um, plenty of great brothers out there. But in our aim, being unaware of that original shame yeah. doesn't play out 
in the best of ways. Wow. So I, I don't want to sound like I don't definitely want to sound contradictory to what, what I just told oh, you no. about the other show. But I just consider it the one of the most important shows I've ever done because I think once you understand that, it it makes us literally become the protectors that we should be, and a, and, and and literally makes us willing to die for our women. And I don't know if that's something that children, that young brothers are being raised with, mm. especially in our communities, without having models to raise us into our manhood. Mm. Um, I think in most most around the world, you don't become a, you don't you don't just become a man. You're t- trained into it, and so we know so in a lot of cases that's missing. Um, and so I think getting past that original shame would help. Um, send us in the right direction. So I, I know I'm saying a lot, but I would definitely encourage people to uh, go find, just literally go, go mental dialogue, do black men hate their women? Just Google that and part one and there's a part two to that show we did a few years later. Um, I'm pretty sure it'll come up. Do you have, is it in like, uh, is any of your shows visual? Like, like can you do it on YouTube? Nah, all my stuff is audio. Audio. Yeah. So, you know, so so what happens is you can grow the show more with visuals because that's the that's the way people like to be served mentally. Mm-hmm. It's just our nature. It um, these are dopamine centers, if you will. Yeah. Um, but our conversations are honestly, they're, they're too deep to 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 lose you not listening. Yeah. So by being a, only an audio show, we reach we don't reach as many, but we're more effective with those we reach. Yes, I love that. Especially the type of shows we're doing, they're deep. They're not, yeah. they're not, you know what I mean? Like we might, we might every now and then we might put up a, a salacious question, but once you get to the show, it's going to be intellectually, you know what I mean? It's going to be like, we might put up something crazy. Like, you know, every now I get my listeners like, I can't believe you put it up because they think of the show as a, you know, kind of highly intellectual, intelligent show, which it is. Yeah. But every now and then I'll put somebody that, you know, out there and they be like, I can't believe y'all are talking about that. I say, well, look, when you get on the show, we're not gonna be we're not gonna be doing love and hip hop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Wow. Okay. So okay, I got a two part question. These two questions popped up in my head as you were talking. First of all, I just commend you for even just being bold enough to just have these conversations because sometimes we're so ashamed and so like, you know, we don't want people to know what we think or how we think, or, you know, sometimes we can get discouraged of what we think people will think about us of what we think, if that makes sense. Right. No, it does make sense. That's why we're doing, we do, we do sexual abuse shows, yeah. domestic violence shows. We don't leave nothing. We, okay, yeah. Cool. Only thing we don't touch. Now I'll touch them personally, but not on the show. We don't touch uh, religion and politics very little probably two to four shows in a, a year. Okay. But that's other than that, we touch everything. Well, can I ask you, why why not? Why don't you touch on those topics as much? So, yeah, no, 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 absolutely. So again, as I told you from the beginning, we practice the art of consideration. And so the two places where people will not listen mm. <laughs> and their beliefs are very high yeah. are politics and religion. Yeah. And so... If our goal is to practice the order consideration, so we can do those dialogues, and we would actually grow the show more if we did more political shows, for example, because that's popular, right? Yeah. So we could grow the show more doing that. Um, and like I said, we do do them, but just very little. Um, but ultimately, um, we're not going to practice what we preach there right. because what happens is in those two arenas, it's just two sides yelling their beliefs at each other, yeah. not really listening or whatever. But when we do the political shows, we do we'll bring on. Um, someone from the left, someone from the right, and an independent, so that we do have all the um, perspectives at least presented. And so we do try to do a show where it's not a bunch of back and forth, but sometimes, you know, sometimes we will, or if, you know, something's coming up or something happened, we'll do a, a political show here and there. Um, you know, like I say, um, at the Middle Dialogue Community Club, our discussions, we don't mind if people, in a sense, bring up their religion or use their religion to present their argument. That kind of stuff doesn't bother us. We just don't lead with that as a topic, if that makes sense. Okay. Okay. Noted. Got it. That makes sense. That makes sense. Because mm-hmm. we welcome we welcome all belief systems, all, all we welcome, because Every- in order to get their opinions, we welcome all opinions. Like, we don't, the one, we don't do group things. Like, that's my, I've been thinking about that. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to make a new uh, promotion or you know just something to start promoting the fact that we don't do groupthink at all. We're, we're not gonna as much as we're worried about our community as conscious as we choose to be. There is no groupthink in middle dialogue. We are we are the place where unlike minded people come together. Yeah, <laughs> how I like that unlike minded people come. Huh, I like that. 
Huh, you just made me think. <laughs> hey, that's what I do. That's what we do. That's what we do. Okay, wait. I'm so glad to be on here. Well, no, what's your next question? Go ahead, Queen. Um, 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 it was a two-part question because you mentioned something that um you that was gonna run into this question, which was do you specific um only do dialogue that's specifically based on the back black community and how important is research to the dialogue? No, absolutely. So to, to a degree, I think for the most part, as much as I say I'm a moderator, I think, I mean, I think for the people that follow or listen regularly, I'm an avid researcher. I, I, uh, so the research is key if we're trying to get to the truth, right? Yeah, yeah. And so as I mentioned a little earlier, I said a lot of times we'll believe things that are not supported by data. So I was already kind of going and not knowing this was going to be a question or whatever. Uh, but for the most part, we definitely try to bring a lot of data to these dialogues because again it can get you to the truth despite what you may believe or despite what you've heard all your life a lot of things that we're saying or believing in our lives whether we recognize it or not it's just been repeated over and over yeah. and there may be no data to back it up and then you know so we are definitely we, we are data driven as much as possible some subjects you can't be uh, you know what i mean that comes from time to time but if we can bring the data to the table we definitely um do that and uh, i'm sorry that i'm really jumping to the second part of your question the first part of your question was just simply um say it again if you don't mind so make sure I'm the research oh does it is it the dialogue or mental dialogue do you are you your dialogue space on the black, the black okay gotcha yeah, yeah. So what happens is a lot of the topics definitely are focused on our community, but a lot of the business topics, um, like I have, I have this uh, one of one of one of my guys is in my, um, I, we have a, a mastermind group as well. We just started that so many months, a few months ago. Uh -huh. That's going super well. Yeah. Um, but one of the guys from the mastermind, Dwayne Drawn, he said years ago when he was on my show, prior to us having the mastermind on my show, he, uh, we were doing a show about um, hiding. Do black, um, let me say it was um, hiding, like some of like black businesses, okay, hiding while hiding while black. This is what, it was kind of like the, yeah, it's like the title of like you got a business, but you maybe put it up as not a black business to draw more business, or something gotcha, to that effect. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Yeah, yeah, so that was the show we were doing, and I remember we had Dwayne drawn on, and I'm like, so I got the title a little bit, a little off, but what he said was, um, for him, he's never even considered the concept of doing black business. Mm -hmm. He's just doing business. Yeah. So I bring that to the table when you ask that question. A lot of our business topics, we may say, you know, let's get, let's help, let's help black businesses scale. That might be the question or whatever. But at the end of the day, we're just teaching our businesses how to do business. Yeah. So a lot of the business topics, while obviously trying to help out our community, if you will, mm -hmm. um, in reality, anybody listening for business is gonna learn. You know what I mean? But obviously we'll bring up some ideas that are unique or unique challenges to the black to black businesses. So so yeah, most of the topics most of the topics are about us, but not a hundred percent. Gotcha. Some of them are broad in general. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, and, and then do you have a is it a, do you have a team, or is it like like how do you like decipher like do you do the research yourself or do you have someone that's that you have a you. person that does the research or you know what I mean. Like no, I got you. I got you. Yeah, I love researching, so I do the research, you know, myself for the most part, as far as that goes. Um, but as far as the show, I have a, a cadre. Of, I always have. A, I'll make sure there's always a woman's voice on the show, you know, because men love to debate, right? But I matter. I always make sure there's a woman's voice on the show, and so I have a cadre of um, sisters who co, who guest co host I call them the queens of intellect. They're all dynamic sisters in their own right, and so I, I bring them on the show to keep keep me in check. You know what I mean? So, you know, whoever the guest may be. And then, um, so I have the Queens of Intellect. Um, they helped me do the actual show. Okay. And then when we were doing the live event, I had a, a, a circle who might help me with the live events. But right now, we're not doing them. Um, so right now, everything we're doing is on Zoom okay. and on the show. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Okay, two two more questions, and I'm going to let you go. Um, okay, it's all good. I've got to, I got, I got, it. I, I want, I want to, I want to say this before. Well, I'll tell them at the end. And let me ask you, I want to tell you how, like, how we connected. I want to talk, tell people that real quick. Sure. But let's we'll finish the questions, and I'll tell them that after the questions. Okay, okay, cool. Okay, so the question of the question. Oh, is this your passion? Would you consider this like... Yeah, without this, question. Well, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, without question. Um, so people a lot of times say, well, how long have you been doing it or whatever? So when I told you about the, the, the writing the piece, starting the event, and it was kind of like a hobby in the barbershops, so like that, we were, you know, we had gotten to where we were in coffee shops and things of that nature. But you know, for a lot of years, we were just in the barber shop, didn't have a radio show. Um, 
But anyway, people say, well, when did you start it? So, so basically, I did the first barbershop event in 2008. But then I tried to go, I was, I, had been in, I was in sales for like 10 years, and I tried to go into corporate sales for a couple of years. And so during that time, I shut it down because I was, you know, just trying to get my career off the ground and, you know, try to make my mind, try to get into the music industry. So I was coming out of the music industry and, um, you know, didn't really get all the way in or whatever. And with, uh, from, you know, from the business side. But anyway, so I tried to go into corporate sales. And so for two years, I was so busy with that, I didn't have time to do anything. And then the, the, the irony of it all is I ended up getting fired for something I didn't do. Mm. And it was a very difficult situation. Um, but what that moment, what that taught me, you know, I got let go for something I didn't do, but it taught me all the time that I put in to try to build that career. I realized I, even if I do other things, I, I, I have to take jobs that allow me to do this passion yeah. because that two years off, like that, especially getting let go for something I didn't do is like a big reminder. You can't just do something without having some passion for it. Now, I enjoyed the, the sale that I was doing, but just to have that happen and be controlled by somebody else, it was like, I'll, I'll never take a job that makes me work so much that I can't do this passion. So since that time, it's, it's you know, it's, 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 I still do, I have to do a bunch of side jobs because obviously doing something like this is very different. Yeah. It's been a business for about six or seven years and that's just been at the encouragement of my of, of people that are in the community club uh, we didn't call it a community club years ago, but they encouraged, like, you got to turn this into something. You got to turn this into something. So I basically tried to turn my passion into a business, and I'm still figuring it out. Yeah. I think we are just now hitting our stride, believe it or not. In 2020, of all, year, of all years, we were starting to hit our stride. Um, um, I had a, a goal of how, doubling my membership in 2020. That part didn't happen, but it was like all the other things that happened, I think now have positioned us to double our membership and people are now joining at the higher levels because we got different levels of memberships. Yep. If you got a business, you can advertise on the show, advertise on, like we do commercials on the show and things of that nature. Uh, we do Zoom events where we feature a black online. We, I'm, I'm hoping, I'll tell you about that when at the end. I think you had one more question, so I don't want to. Yes, the last one. So that was not really a question. I just wanted you to kind of leave um, like some last words of encouragement to people who um, are like you who are, you know, entrepreneurs and just doing, you know, in your passion and, and encouraging people and like just anything that you want to say to the people to, to encourage them, inspire them. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Um, I'll, I'll encourage you with something that I'm trying to pin down on myself and get better at. Um, I have like an amazing, basically at the end of the day, I think I said at the very beginning, I'm a connector, right? Like that's what I do. Or uh, whatever, but I what I will say is in getting making these connections and being able to assist people to go further along with their goals, whether it's buying a home, learning about investments, insurance. Uh, we just got all these experts like A one people, top notch. Uh, we we have dynamic black businesses doing their thing. Yeah. You can find them with our community club. As I said, we want to be a virtual neighborhood. So to bring it back around to your question, I say all that to say that as passionate as I am, this is my life. I'll never give it up again. Um, what I've been connected to a couple of one specific um, person, Terry Simmons, is a dude, this amazing business consultant. I bring him on the show all the time because he just gives gems all the time. And so what I'm now pinning down on is as passionate as I am about this, the the the, the uh, to turn this into something that can literally have capacity, maybe pat, you know, that can be passed down. I have to focus on the nuts and bolts, the stuff that I don't enjoy yeah. about the business. And so when you say the words, of, the, you know, the words of encouragement to entrepreneurs, if it is your passion, it, it, you know, you, that will keep you from stop doing it because at the end of the day, you know, you can't have success if you stop doing it. But these are the things you've heard all the time. Those type of encouragements are all over the Internet and social media, you know, but there's nobody encouraging you to go do the, the stuff you don't want to do. Yeah. You know, the, the nuts and bolts, the 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 boring stuff. Yeah. And so. So if you're going to if you're going to have something that's where you're not going to be just self-employed, for the most part, I am with this, if you will, and some other businesses that I have. Yeah. If you want to move out of self-employment, the nuts and bolts gives you capacity to move out of that. So my encouragement is, is as much as you're passionate about it, that'll keep you going. But if you want to scale it, it's the nuts and bolts, the things you don't want to do the people you don't want to pay for, whether it's an accountant, mm -hmm. a social media person, you're doing it all yourself because your passion lets you do it. Yeah. But scaling will require that eventually you pay for those people. So that's my encouragement to entrepreneurs out there. 
do something that you're passionate about, but it's the parts you don't want to do that will help you scale. Yeah, that's good. That's real good. Ooh, that's good. <laughs> okay, okay. So yeah, that was it for me. But I know you wanted to speak about um, how we got it, how we met. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. So, so what's so dope about us even doing this live? I mean, I, I'm, I'm assuming you remember this, mm-hmm. but. Yeah, we were, you know, like I said, it was something passionate about. I, was, I forget what event it was, huh. but it was something that we we, we ended up meeting, like almost kind of in happenstance at the end of the event. Yeah. But it was something, you know, something encouraging, something encouraging about the African American community, whatever the event was. That part I don't remember. Yeah. But but as usual, as I'm there, I'm meeting people and letting them know, telling them about mental dialogue because I was always at that time we were doing a monthly event. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I might, at that time I might have st- I might have been in the coffee shops by that time. I, I think, think it, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, so I'm running into you on the way out, you know, beautiful sister. So, you know, but again, you know, hey, I like beautiful sisters. Anyway, with that said, so, but I'm still, but I, the, but I'm in sale mode, so I ain't even trying to holler at you. Exactly, like, yeah. Yeah, I give you a yeah, real talk. Yeah. I'm like, hey, got this, I'll give you a flyer or whatever. Yeah. And you was like, I'm about to move to LA. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You, and you says, I will come, but I'm about to move to LA. Now, of course, everybody tells me they will come, right? right. Even the people, you know, whatever, most of them don't show up, right? But you was like, yeah, I, you know, whatever, I'll keep up with you. I, yeah, I want to know whatever. And so I think um, I think I got your number or something because I always you know, I always ask people to get a, to get to add it to my text list. Right. So for you, because you were leaving, I don't know why I would have done that. I don't, I don't know if the show was started at that time, mm-hmm. but what I do remember is you were literally leaving. So you said, but I do come back here from time to time. So maybe when I come back, I'll check you out. Yeah. So with all that said, that was probably – Five years. When did you move to LA? When did you move? Uh, That's when it was. 2016 is when I moved. Okay, so two, in 2016 you moved. So we've stayed in contact that entire time. Yes. To to now in 2021, I'm on your live. Yes. This is, you know what I'm saying? Like just the, even the fact that we stay because I've watched you and I, I, I and care, you know, send you a text say I like what you're doing, I love what you're doing because you, you told me you were going out there to try to blossom into your career. I'm watching you. I'm loving every move you make. Them dance classes are dope. You know what I mean? You're dope. But I just think it's so cool that, you know, just literally just little minimal contact through social media all these years has led to, you know, you coming around. I think I, I did invite you to one of my connections events. So I'm still going to hold you to trying to finally get to get the one. Because a few times you came to Atlanta, we didn't have an event or whatever. So we never got it worked out for you to make it. You know, because we were all talking about Get you to finally make it to an event and yeah. just their timing just never worked out right so, so speaking of events this sunday it is invite only i do uh, i have a, a mental dialogue community club connections um it's basically a dynamic is a, a black online marketplace dynamic i introduce you to several um, black owned businesses uh, dynamic businesses you can you know they'll do a little quick pitch you'll see them we'll be on their websites so we'll get to meet these dynamic black owned business owners and online businesses and then after that, we do an open dialogue about conversations in the black community. So pretty dope how we do it. Sunday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Pretty early for you all the way out there on the East Coast. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it is invite only. So for anybody that hears this, if um, you uh, find us at, at mental dialogue, at mental underscore dialogue on IG. Mm-hmm. And if you anybody who inboxes me, I will send you the link on Sunday to be a part. Because it is an invite only event so if you uh if you inbox inbox me at mental underscore dialogue i think i don't know if i can type that in i don't know if i'm able to yeah, you can, here. i think you can pin it uh let me try to yeah, let me try to, to put that in there so this is just our ig you'll be able to go to that get to that on sunday every saturday morning is the mental dialogue talk show it's actually um live every saturday but it's on all the um platforms Spotify, Apple Podcast, Stitcher, Podbean. That's where you hear it after the fact. But if right. you ever want to catch it live and actually, um, you know, actually um, call into the show. Um, this Saturday, I got this amazing queen, Deetra White. She's only the second person I've ever had come on for this. We have a series called Conversation with Smart People. Yeah. So that's the only time I don't have my, my queens of intellect on. I just do a one-on-one show with them. Mm-hmm. And um, La Deetra White, she's doing this vaccine project really delving into the vaccine hesitancy that exists in our community. She's going real deep with it. So I'm bringing that queen up. She's a Howard grad, dynamic sister in this. Um, she's known as the ambush queen. She used to go to businesses and 
um, literally helped their businesses out on the spot. So that was what she was known for here in the Atlanta area. But now she's moving on to this project. So it'll be an amazing conversation in the second hour. We're actually doing, I do it every now and then, uh, open dialogue. So people that call in, we can talk about whatever people want to talk about, whether it's Russell Wilson, uh, Judas and Messiah, you know, whatever you want to talk about. You know, that's where you can call in and talk about the Trump, the Trump uh, impeachment if you want. You know what I mean? So it's an open, it's an open, open hour. So whatever the callers call in and talk about, um, you know, we can do that on the second hour. And then the last thing I want to mention, if you don't mind, mm, yeah. is um, um, something that we started about five months ago, which was thing that I'm, one of the things I'm most proud of is we have an event that we do is via Zoom. Now, this is open to everybody. It's not invite only. It's called a community checkup. Y'all all right. Mm. And that's where we bring on mental health professionals every once a month, the last Thursday of the month. It's open to everybody. As long as you're following us on Mental Dialogue, I don't know how to pin it, but if you yeah. follow us, everything I'm telling you about, if you go into the bio, except for the invite only events. Yeah which is most of our events are not. Well, we've done more now. But either way, if anything I'm telling you about, if you go into the bio, the show is going to be there live. It's going to be there after the fact. The community checkup is going to be in the bio on IG. So we got a we got a, a, a page. We're still building the page up, mentaldialogue.com. So you can go follow us there. If what I'm saying, you want to become a part of our virtual neighborhood, you can go become a member. There's different levels, different membership levels. But as far as, you know, being on IG, Everything's on the bio. So just keep that in mind. The community checkup, mental health therapist, and we literally have dialogues about what mental health looks like, what to expect if you see a therapist. Uh, we've gotten people therapy, for, you know, literally firsthand from, again, I bring on A1 top-notch doctor-level therapist for that event. And that's open to anybody across, in the country um, last Thursday of the month or whatever. But obviously, just trying to get that, get over the stigmas of mental health in our community, because as I said from the beginning, we're dealing with the psychology of a people yeah. to a degree that are, are suffering from, you know, some people call it, you know, um, what, post-traumatic post -traumatic slaves yeah. or whatever. So if that's, yeah, so if that's a real thing, which I do believe it, it to be a real thing, yeah. um, I think we unfortunately suffer from it unknowingly. And as I always like to say, this country has never allowed our, as a collective to get on that couch. If you think about, you know, how they used to say, you get on the couch with the psychologist or whatever, the yeah. therapy or whatever. And so what we're doing with this virtual neighborhood is we're that couch. Mm. That's what we're openly doing. Wow. Wow. That is so good. That is so good. I just want to say thank you so much. Like for just coming on here and dropping gems, spreading your wisdom, spreading your knowledge and allowing us to just, just, just just get just feed it you know just feeding us thank you thank you and just thank you for your passion too you know and allowing and, and connecting us and I'm, I'm definitely going to make sure i have remember what he said y'all if you are interested in any and in, in tuning into his projects and everything that he has going on definitely follow him mental underscore dialogue correct correct that's the ig page um you know you can go to mental dialogue.com but like i said we're still working on that to get everything up on that right now and so, um, but that's where, you know, if you want to be a part of our membership and get invites to our exclusive events, because our exclusive stuff is off the chain. Our, uh, if you join at the black and platinum level, that's where we have the mastermind. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot of high net worth individuals in there. I'm not saying that, that alone makes it what makes it what's worth it, right. but we do real high level dialogues on business. Um, like to, uh, we did um, how to retire tax free. Do you really can do that? Believe it or not. Mm. Um, you know what I mean? We did a, you know, we did the Bitcoin thing a few weeks ago or whatever. So we're going to get onto some government contracting again. These are the higher levels. So I just encourage you to become a part of what you, what we do. And as you listen to more, hear more shows, eventually you will find a place for you to fit in. And we got experts to help you with anything you need. Uh, literally, that's why we're a virtual neighborhood. If we all got what we need in our neighborhood, you know, we all we need. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I totally agree. Well, thank you again so much. And I'm proud of you. Congratulations. Keep on doing your thing. I'm excited. I'm more proud of you. Huh? I'm more proud of you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Listen, we doing this. We represent for our people and we doing it. We doing big things. And I'm excited to see you when I come in. And I'm a, I'll touch base with you for sure so we can go ahead and, and connect and everything, okay? Yeah. No, no doubt, no doubt. Are you busy uh, at 5 o'clock on Sunday? I'm going to give you that one of them invites. 5 o'clock Sunday. This Sunday, right? Uh-huh. I don't think I have anything planned. So maybe I'll see you on Sunday night for the Connections event. It's going to be dope. Yeah, like, yeah just can you send, send me the invite for sure. Okay, so yeah, you, yeah. All right, sounds good. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you again. Uh, thank you, Queen. It was beautiful. All right, have a good day.
I appreciate you. All right.